Hi folks, so we're looking at log management, which is essentially around how we make sense of all of the events and information that gets stored on systems in our network. And in particular, we're, in, in particular, we're interested from a cybersecurity perspective. So I'm going to give an overview of some things to be aware of with log management. So, you know, in order to be able to respond to a security event, we need to be able to detect and get an understanding of it. There are lots of programs that log various kinds of events that software developer, developers think might be noteworthy. Um, and typically what this means is log files aren't just for security stuff, they're full of all sorts of information. Anything that the software developer thought that we might want to know about, or that they might want to know about, if we have, if we, if there are bugs in the software. So sometimes you can control what gets logged. Sometimes you can't. It's just the software developers have just decided this is this is worth knowing about, and it goes in a log file. Uh, that usually the log entries just end up being appended to an actual file, and. You know, there are lots of different events that can trigger log, logging from happening. There's obviously network activity, firewall events, uh, um, such as a denial of someone trying to access something and it's denied. Uh, whenever a user runs something as root by a sudo or attempts to do that, it's logged to a file. Whenever there are hardware errors like faulty media, whenever a lot of software errors, including kernel crashes, get um, logged. Um, various kind of resource accesses, so Apache for example, a lot of web servers will log every time anything is accessed, every time ever any website is um, loaded will get logged to a log file, um, every time uh, it fails to load a website that'll get logged as well, any kinds of general messages from software, so if you attach a new device into your computer that gets logged, so there's lots of information and any of those events could be invaluable, but as a result of just the vast amount of stuff that gets logged, log files can be very noisy. I mean, a lot of stuff um, that you're not interested in. And but the logs aren't very helpful if if nothing or nobody is regularly reading them. So if you're just storing all this stuff, then you know maybe it'll be helpful one day when you're trying to track down a problem. But there might also be a lot of stuff that you're missing because you're not actively looking for it. And so in order to make the most use of logs, you actually need to be reading and reacting to log files, either through automated um, solutions or you can literally have someone manually reading um, log files to review them. But obviously it depends on the log file that might not be actually humanly possible to actually audit through everything manually. So, but logs provide an audit trail of events that have happened. So a chronological record that provides evidence of a sequence of activities. And you can examine log files to figure out what has or is happening on a system. And you can use it when determining whether to treat an event as a security incident or not. So there are various programs that log directly to log files either just by opening a log file and writing to them. Or it might use a logging service which takes care of the details of where to log to. So for example, syslog is the typical Unix logging service um, and it's a semi-formal standard on, on Unix systems where uh, the, if there's an event that happens, the message gets sent to syslog and it does the logging for you. Uh, there are a number of kind of services that provide syslog features like syslog ng next generation and rsyslog so there's like newer versions than the actual like syslog the original version of syslog but you can configure them to write to files or even over a network when there are events and on unix the logs are usually found in var slash log so if you look in there there's a bunch of files and directories of things that are um, where all the different programs and um, logging services are like logging things to. So there are various 
files related to different types of messages and from various programs. So Vialog Messages or Vialog Syslog will be the main one that has like everything that doesn't fit any other cat category essentially. Uh, so that can be a huge amount of stuff can end up in there. But you can also, there'll typically also be a firewall or an audit log and a warnings. A snort will log to its own, Apache will log to its own. So that there'll be a, a number of different things that get logged in various places. So uh, speaking of Apache or web servers, you know, the, there are Apache will log every error into an, um, a log file that's defined by error log in its configurations. And so by default, it's under var log HTTPD um, error log, uh, or if it's going to syslog. Um, there's also um, every time anything is accessed, it gets stored somewhere as well. And the, you know, you can specify what it's stored and where. Um, if you're using Apache, there's also mod security is an extension that you might consider installing, and it includes a number of audit logging features that allows you to record further information, but also it acts as a web application firewall um, so that it can detect and prevent attacks. Um, but on um, for logging web site access, there is the common log format, CLF, um, which is a standard format that looks something like this, and which shows like the IP address, um, like identity, user ID, the time, uh, the HTTP request, the status code that came back, and the size of the object that was returned. Uh, so that's like a common format. There's also a combined log format, which is another common format, and it adds a few extra things. Um, like the referrer and the user agent. Um, but you can also you can configure it. Like a lot of tools, you can specify exactly what you want it to log if you don't want it to conform to those standards. If you use a standard format, then you can use the standard um, like reporting tools to parse through your log files. So there's an advantage to using the standard log file format because then there are a number of tools that can read that for you. So there are other things that you can choose to log. So you could use process accounting, which is basically a um, way of telling the system that you want it to log every program that runs. Um, it's been around for a long time on, on Linux systems, uh, but the biggest downside is it doesn't actually tell you all of the arguments used to run the tool, just the command itself. Um, but then the newer Linux audit subsystem provides incredibly um, detailed rules that you can specify to audit um, on. So you can uh, specify access to specific files. So every time a certain file is accessed, you can create a log uh, log entry. Um, you know, you can you can basically have it tell you about certain system calls, um, and and they'll all that stuff will be stored in var log audit audit log. So bash history also provides a list of commands that are, have been run by uh, any user that's using bash, uh, which is a standard shell on um, most Linux systems. But it is trivial to alter that because it's just a file that lists all the commands. Um, and you can also use the history command. Uh, and you can, you know, you can, if you just type history, it'll tell you a list of all of the um, what's in the bash history, um, and you can also use that command to clear the history. So, you know, an attacker will typically not leave that information lying around, but, you know, you never know. Uh, but also, it, it's just, it, it's useful to know that it's there because you can see a list of commands that's been run if it's not been edited. Um, so it is possible and slightly complicated to get bash to actually log into syslog. So syslog, the classic combination looks a little bit like this, where you have the kernel writing messages to klogd, and you've got all of your you know, web servers and all your other tools using the syslog um, like library call, which sends, command, um, sends the log messages to syslogd, which is a process running on your computer, which then 
you know, has, and there are configurations that decide where to store things, and there's, um, the, the, you can set, like, priorities and severities and um, uh, faculties and things, and, and basically, based on how it's com configured, it will log into different places, into log files, or sending, you can even get it to send messages, or whatever, based on those events that are incoming. So, um, obviously, it's easy to see why it's a bad idea having all of your log files stored on only on the separate computers in your network because it, once the system's been compromised, your log files have you know potentially been compromised as well. So a really good idea is to centralize your logging, uh, and the most basic version of that is to have a centralized syslog server. Um, and so basically, you can traditionally it will use UDP port. Uh, 514, um, but newer versions will use TCP and you can use TLS encryption it's for authentication and integrity so that you don't just have anyone writing log files over your network. So you can actually authenticate, you know, that it's coming from a specific system unless it, the um, keys have been compromised. Um, but you can kind of control who can um, log and so that you can um, record where the logs are coming from. Uh, and, you know, so you need to think about the security of your log files uh, because, you you know, you need to make sure that access to the log servers is only accepting the messages from computers you expect to receive them from. So you can use firewall rules and configuration rules to, um, to make that happen. Um, but also make sure that you're using encryption and public key infrastructure. Um, to make sure that you're protecting against man-in-the-middle attacks and eavesdropping and spoofing on your um, on your log file system. Uh, you should set logs so they're append only um, and you should create, create backups of the logs. So you need to think about the security and also in addition to all that stuff who can access those log files because there can be sensitive stuff in there. Don't completely trust what's in your log files um, if they're local, they may have been altered, um, and not every event that is recorded may have actually happened. So if an attacker has compromised the system, they could then start generating all kinds of alerts that get logged to your central server or onto that system. So, you know, even if your central server is um, configured correctly, not all the log files might actually have been created um, legitimately. And log files can contain malicious content like escape characters. So if there are any scripts that are processing the data need to be designed with secure design practices in mind. So validate all your input and including all the including lines of log files. So the other thing that will typically happen with log files is you can rotate log files so that you can automatically um, compress or delete older log files because they can fill up very quickly. You can end up with um, gigabytes of log files. So, for example, our um, activity server, you know, the, the actual log file that's generated from that is, you know, it's gigabytes large. So you need to have ways of like automatically compressing that information if you want to hold on to it for longer, uh, so that it doesn't, you know, use all of your disk space just holding on to to, to those records. Um, you can set log rotate to do. Um, to, to happen either weekly, like daily, monthly, or, or, or just when it gets grows to a certain size. Uh, and you can schedule it via cron, which is you know a Unix way of um, having things happen on a schedule. Um, log normalization is so that you can convert the format of various kind of logs so that you can store them in a central um, database. So, you know, you'll typically use regular expressions to pull out the stuff out of a, um, a log entry, pull out the, the fields that you're interested in, and then create a normalized way of storing that information. So, uh, MITRE's common event expression, CEE, is an open standard for um, expressing events, which um, some software will convert from various sources to a common language to make it easier to actually query um, so that if you've got Apache logs and syslogs and whatever else, and you want to see what's happened on a specific date, if each of those tools use a different date format, then that could actually be quite difficult to find out 
Whereas if you've normalized your logs, um, then you can just say what happened on this day and you'll be able to get all that information back easily. Uh, newer Linux systems use Journal, um, which is um, used on System D systems um, rather than or in addition to syslog. So journal stores in a binary format rather than text-based format and it has integrity checking baked into it. So it has cryptographic hashing and things to make it more difficult to, you know, alter. You can't easily alter log logs that have been stored uh, compared to like syslog, for example. Um, and it forms like a verifiable chain of events that you can, um, you can look at and, and retrieve. Uh, can receive syslog events and it can forward things through to syslog. So sometimes you'll have journal and syslog on the same system so that um, you've kind of got the benefits of both. On Windows systems, there's the Windows Event Viewer, uh, which you may be familiar with, but it stores the events on a Windows system and you can, um, it will categorize logs into logs coming from applications logs that are security relevant and system logs uh, and that will actually provides you an interface as well for you to kind of access and look at those those logs on a Windows system. You can um, obviously get Windows systems to log centrally as well. There are lots of proprietary solutions available but you can also get Windows to um, log to syslog even. Um, so if you're monitoring log files, one way to do it is just to literally have a running view on your screen of, of um, the logs that are happening. And I've known people that have done that and they had basically, you know, sysadmin type people that are sitting in front of a computer and they'll just have a, a, one of the monitors is just showing the log file in real time. Um, and if you are the sort of person that can read that easily and can make sense of that sort of information um, then you know that's good but um, you know all it takes is there to suddenly be a lot of traffic and things might not be in view for very long um, and also you know what you might miss is things that are repeating or things that have multiple steps that make them interesting so there are specialized tools that you can use that ease monitoring and um, specifically at I'll just introduce the topic of SIEM. So security information and event management, a SIEM system, is a type of system that collects or aggregates log files and alerts from various devices and helps with the analysis of um, analysis and, and alerting. And so it aggregates data, often with log normalization and categorization uh, from all sorts of things that like you can get your file integrity checkers to write to it, your IDS alerts like SNORT, for example, um, your audit, um, and, and then all of the things that we've just been talking about, the server and system logs, get all that stuff logging into your same system, and then it can also provide correlation for you, so it links together related events. So for example, it can detect brute force if there are a number of um, like login attempts that are happening over and over again, um, so it can notice that and tell you that, you know, uh, are you, this looks like a brute force attempt has happened. Do things like detect encrypted channels. Um, and the, I guess the biggest strength of the same system is that it will provide you with dashboard views of what's happening across your network of systems. So you'll, you know, you can look at your, um, across your organization these kinds of events are happening or these are the things you should be interested in it can provide visualizations for traffic over time or different kinds of events over time that can help you make a, a lot of sense of something that can otherwise be completely missed if you're just looking at log files streaming off across your screen um, there are a lot of competing systems that try and provide these kinds of um, features uh, and there are a lot that are specifically focused on one aspect of, of, of that. Um, but two really good, great general purpose solutions are Splunk, uh, which is proprietary or, or Elastic Stack, um, 
which is open source. Both of those are excellent. Um, and basically you can create, um, basically set up your organization so that all of your devices and systems are um, sending all sorts of things into your um, same system, into Splunk or Elasticstack. And then you, you, know, you use Kibana, for example, in Elasticstack to create dashboards and views of all the information that is um, that's there, uh, and you know, really powerful technique. So, um, really, if you are uh, an organization that uh, has a lot of um, logs happening, you need to think about on the individual basis of a machine. You know, the, what I started off talking about, which is the information that gets stored and log, logged in the first place. And then you can think about how you're going to centralize that information, uh, normalize the, the log files, and, um, you, you know, you can actually design, uh, design your own dashboards and ways of looking at that information that's helpful to yourself. And using a same system uh, is a very good idea to help you make sense of that information so you don't miss it.